Okie dokie. Here we go. This is a game that I've really been looking forward to casting. It's it's um, only a few days old. Maybe some of you guys on Twitch have seen it. Please don't spoil it. Uh, but it's Mines v. Franks. I, I really think that's an interesting matchup. Uh, obviously, it's random sieves. Viper was um, not quite ready for being Mayans early on. He'll grab Loom and uh, look around for his sheep. And we'll watch the Viper here taking the yellow Mayans. 2374 rating for him. Viper will be up against Spaden. Spaden playing as Franks. Franks are, they're not a very dynamic sieve, but they're not as they're not as one-sided as you might think, if you're uh, just thinking about this superficially. You can do some things with Franks, and we'll have to see if Spaden can get creative. It feels like a game that Spaden has to win in the early Castle Age. If he doesn't, the Viper should, should steamroll him in Imp, but that's just my feeling about these sieves. I'm not usually right, so don't worry about that. Uh, Spaden on his side of the map, very able to wall this left flank. Stone and gold are ugly, man. Those are way the frick out and on the front, but his uh, main gold and secondary stone are pretty damn safe. Barry's in the back. He can create a really nice pocket here if he wants to. A really nice, safe back area for Spaden if he does just a wee bit of work. Uh, Viper on the other side of the map playing in those beautiful yellow trunks. He will have uh, the right flank of his base. Actually, his entire base is on a downhill slope. Crater TC here, totally wide open to the left. Gold on top of the hill, stone on top of the hill. Viper here is, it's not the worst map ever. He can wall this in, but its I wouldn't call this good by any stretch. No safe gold, no safe stone. He's going to have to work for everything in this match. And maybe that's fair. You know, we've got the Viper coming in at 2374. I think he kind of uh, maybe should have a little bit less good of a map than his opponent Spaden. Spaden's a great player here, and we're going to see a, hopefully a really great game. 1v1 on Arabia. Sorry about the title for those of you guys watching on Twitch. Fourville's going over to Wood early for Viper. If he wants to drush, he probably can. Frank's player can drush too, but it looks like he's going to have three Vills on Wood and probably not go for it. Not super uncommon to see Franks go like Drush Fast Castle, but against Mayans, uh, maybe maybe not a good thing to do. Uh, looks like the red player here is going to... Uh, Spaden here is going to seed a lot of territory. I think he really... He doesn't know that this wood line connects to the corner of the map. That's the that's the big rub. I think if he knew what we know, he would be able to just wall here and wall here. But uh, for now, first couple of uh, pieces of the wall are going to be really conservative. Uh, red player out finding his sheep, just scouting around the map, peeling back the onion. Viper's done a bit more scouting, uh, but he's been kind of uh, on his own side of the map for the most part. Viper is scouting a lot on his side of the map and probably thinking, what in the absolute hell am I going to do with this? Yellow player luring in his boar as we speak. Still four villagers on wood. Viper may be trying to build a bit of a wall on top of this ridge. Actually, one step down from the top of that ridge. Suppose that means he needs less houses to get the job done. Killer B, if Spaden wins this, you must promise to remain in Sweden until the end of your natural life. Yeah, fair enough. All right, I'm in. Let's do it. I'm in for that. Wait, what? Spaden is Franks? Uh, yeah, Spaden here is Franks. Spaden is playing as the Franks, the Frankensteins. Yeah, man, the Viper's map here is quite, quite bad. I think the um, I think that could be a deciding factor. We'll have to see, though. I mean, Spaden at the moment, has he scouted forward? He's just now coming forward. He's got to do a good bit of scouting. Sometimes if you come forward and you find your opponent's wood line, you find their TC... If you're me anyway, you get like complacent. He's got to scout and find all these gold piles and realize that his opponent's map is really, really tricky. I think Spaden here needs to identify that and needs to decide to get aggressive. His map almost tells him to be passive because he's going to have a really safe map. Uh, and maybe that will work also, but I feel like aggression would be better than passivity for this one. Anyway, enough of me just trying to say big words that I don't actually know the definition to. Let's watch a good match go down. I'll get out of your way so you can enjoy it. 18 vills for each player. A uh, slight, slight bit quicker is Spaden, but he's not loomed. So actually the Viper is about uh, almost a full villager ahead, half a villager ahead. At this point in the game, Spaden doing some scouting. He has found the stones, the gold, the berries. Spaden has done exactly what I was asking him to do, which is really not that easy. I mean, perfect scouting in AOC is, is hard to come by. Spaden here is going to do a perfect job scouting. He 
He's going to come around to this wood line. He's going to know every single thing about the Viper's map. And uh, yeah, that's really going to be a benefit. Honestly, Spaden should win this game. Uh, that I'm going to go ahead and say right off the bat. Spaden missing a couple sheep, which is a bit of a bummer for him. Uh, but Viper running directly under the TC. Eagle Warrior is going to survive, but he's going to lose a pretty significant amount of HP. Uh, Viper did not decide to drush by the looks of it. He is at the moment on 22 vils. And the Viper will go at least to 23 before going up. And we will see what he goes to. 23 vils kind of would suggest to me that maybe he's going to go on to uh, gold here. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's not on gold yet. We'll see if he sends a few of these boar villagers over there in a moment. Viper idling for just a second, but, you know, nobody's perfect. Not even the Viper. Uh, looks like we will see the Viper doing some good scouting. He's going to find some of his opponent's resources. Going to walk into the back area here and figure out that Spaden is sitting pretty on a gold mine, baby. Spaden's in really good shape. He's bringing his scout back, and I think he's going to try to snipe the Viper's eagle if he can. And he should be able to do that. If the Viper gets within the range of Spaden's mill, for instance, uh, we should see that scout make a beeline over here. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Barracks is down for the red player as he transitions to the feudal age. Nothing coming out of there. He's actually going to go find those sheep. Spaden could see them with his vills, and he's going to go back and get them. Really important, actually, to grab those resources. Playing a game without a couple of sheep is actually a pretty major disadvantage. Uh, at the moment, Spaden's going to try to get those sheep over, but uh, he's going to have to put these vills to a different task. Stable coming up right away for the red player. Went up on 20 vills. Should have the jump on the viper. Uh, Viper will get a barracks up on top of this ridge line, but uh, this is tough. This is a tough build. Viper is going to need... I said Viper there. Viper is going to need uh, three spears, maybe? I mean, one for this wood line, one for the berries. Maybe one can do both uh, the berries and the gold. But he's going to need some spearmen, I would guess, really, really quickly. Spaden is playing a flawless freaking game. Goes back, grabs his sheep, scouted perfectly, and sniped the Viper's Eagle. That is a really, really nicely played bit from Spaden. Viper got a ton of information, but um, but Spaden right now is in a great spot. Viper with a score lead, going double range, going to add in a couple spears. First spear is forward? Is that spearman going forward? Yeah, I guess the Viper here is just going to try to seize the initiative right away. Spaden's got scouts, but he's not he's not ungarrisoned them yet. Looks like he will wait for three and then start to head forward. Uh, the Viper, I don't know, man. He's coming back with that spear. Viper there um, looked like he was getting aggressive. Look at Spaden just doing the, the best scouting. Man, I have such a Spaden crush right now. I guess I have to as a, uh, as a person living in Sweden. Looks like double range archers for the Viper. Spaden's going to just try to string this spearman along. That spear is so far away from the points in Viper's base that need to be protected uh, that, man, these scouts coming in from Spaden are going to absolutely run roughshod on his opponent. Spaden with one vil coming forward, maybe going to drop a tower on the Viper's wood line here. Oh god, that would be so devastating, because look at the Viper's other options for wood. Well, this corner of the map, which he's actually uh, starting to get rather defended, building up some houses, could be good, but oh god. This is, uh, Spaden right now is making some good decisions by the looks of it. At least by my approximation. Viper Spearman is coming forward. Man, I, I, I don't like it at all. But hey, it is what it is. He obviously doesn't know what we know. That there are some scouts that are about to be roaming into his eco. Those first couple scouts will be coming now from Spaden. Spaden's gonna take a fight with a vill here for a moment. Yeah, he will eventually kill that villager. Uh, by the looks of it, Tower is going to come up in the back area here. Viper with some quick walling. Oh my god, he's playing right into Spaden's hand. The Viper will invest a little resource and time to wall that up, but in the meantime, Spaden's starting to build a tower. Spaden might need Fletching to reach those vills. I don't know if he's going to have the range, but holy sweet Jesus, he is... Viper has a bad map, and Spaden is, like, twisting the knife. Scouting really nicely, making good decisions... His scouts are really going to benefit from uh, this tower completion. If this tower completes while these scouts are really close by, uh, we might see more villagers go down from the Viper. Viper's playing a kind of a standard mines game, as you might play against a player who's going to go scouts. He's going to add in some spears. He's going to start adding in some archers. Viper is maybe just scouting the corner. No, he's looking for those scouts, unfortunately. 
Those scouts are over near his wood line. Fortunately for the Viper, he is going to have a Spearman there and ready. Spaden hasn't done anything with his scouts yet, um, but he has honey-potted his opponent. He's honey-dicked his opponent into, uh, well, he's killed one Vil, and he's tricked his opponent into walling up a wood line that is now kind of GG. I guess if you're the Viper, you can like power build a tower here and try to take this wood line back, but man, it's not a great spot. Spaden will lose his scouts though. Oh boy, he's gonna throw the Viper a bit of a bone. Fletching coming from Spaden so he can reach more of those vills, I suppose. Spaden's gonna kill a vill or two. He's gonna idle this wood line. He did lose his scouts for pretty cheap, uh, but he did do some serious damage. Oh man, Spaden again kind of not able to keep his scout out in front of the Viper. Two vill lead for Spaden. That's because he's killed two of the Viper's vills. That's gonna be a nice little advantage here in the Feudal Age. At the moment, nothing in the bank for Spaden. Pretty much walled in, though, or almost totally walled in. Uh, has a couple vills on stone, which is interesting. Maybe just replenishing his towers, uh, the money he spent on this tower, but maybe maybe something more. Maybe another tower uh, is in the works later on. We'll see, but uh, at the moment, I still like Spaden's position. Viper with a score lead, which is uh, probably deserved since he is the only one. Uh, he's got a much larger army. Spaden's army, actually, I just saw some units. What is he up to? Spaden building some skirms, I think. Nice gate to close out his base. Where are you, Mr. Spaden? Yeah, Spaden on the map with some skirms. Plus one, plus one. Viper at the moment has no upgrades. He will run back at least until he gets fletching. Probably more than that. Spaden's in a good spot. Viper's cruel. He's making Spaden think he, think he has a chance. Hey, Mr. Do. Good to see you. The hill advantage on that tower, too. Yeah, that is a really tough... Viper's got a terrible base. Good to see you, dupers. At the moment, we are seeing Spaden uh, doing a really nice job here. Wheelbarrow coming in for him. Viper will have uh, about 400 food in the bank. Still has his initial stone. Uh, Spaden's floating some wood, but uh, he's not going to be clicking up to castle terribly soon. We're still going to see a feudal fight. Uh, Spaden would probably be pretty happy to kill a couple of those spears, or at least a couple of these, uh, you know, expensive archers. Looks like he's going to just kind of hang out and uh, pick away at his opponent. Viper able to get a house up to block in this back entrance. That's going to be useful uh, for basically the knights that we might expect Spaden to build soon. Viper will lose all of his spears there on the front, and he's going to start losing a couple archers as well. Spaden trying to micro around this, trying to avoid some arrow fire. Seems to be, yeah, it seems to be taking down a couple of those archers as we speak. Okay, so Spaden's in a good spot, going to be clicking up soon. So is the Viper. And we're going to see this game go to the Castle Age. Uh, Viper at the moment uh, is equal on Vils, but I think that's because Spaden has Wheelbarrow. I think Spaden had to get Wheelbarrow there, and his opponent caught up a little bit. Spaden's, uh, not everything is good for the red player here. He's got a wood line that he's kind of partially chopped through. He's actually significantly chopped through it. Uh, the Viper will almost inevitably build some sort of archers, maybe some plumes. This area is going to be really tricky. It's just not a thick wood line at all. Very inviting to some raiding. Uh, Spaden can transition over to this wood line for a bit, but uh, ideally you'd like to have at least a couple of thick wood lines to rely on. Second stable coming for the red player. Uh, thinking about knights, no big surprise there. Viper's still losing this entire area to Spaden. Huge, huge disadvantage for the yellow player. Losing two lumber camps and a bit of gather time just from one really nicely placed tower. Viper coming forward with skirms, but he's not going to get through because Spaden has stonewalled unless there's a hole somewhere. Is there a hole between this house and the uh, blacksmith? I doubt it. I, I, I seriously doubt it. Castle Age coming from Spaden, and I think we're going to speed this one up just a wee bit. We're going to wait for the Viper to roam around and basically do some scouting. Nice forward-thinking tower from Spaden. Oh, sweet Jesus. He saw what we saw, and he he made a decisive action to uh, basically protect his map. He would be wise, Spaden here, not to chop through this wood line. Skirmishers eventually, or even plumes, can walk right under this tower. Not that big of a deal. Uh, so it would be good to have at least one tree keeping that uh, solid wall. Spaden still with two vills on stone. He's been on stone for a while, has 280 in the bank. Viper's got 260, that means that he is on stone, and look at how intensely the Viper wants a castle. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to see what the Viper does and then say it's a good idea, but this is a good idea. He's going to have a castle right as he hits the castle age, eh, a little bit after, somewhere on top of this ridge line to defend his economy. 
this ridge line just absolutely sucks for the viper so i think he just needs a castle and uh, obviously you can get out plumes plumes aren't going to be uh they're not going to be the perfect game changer but they're going to be something that can maybe swing this game for the viper spaden with just a 60 point advantage but he's done a really nice job here Beating the Viper to Castle Age. Going to start uh, getting Chain Barding Armor here. Going to start pumping out some Knights. KT's on the way. Looks like Spaden will build four of those right off the bat. Uh, red player getting really close to chopping through this wood line. Yeah, whatever. It's his game, man. If he wants to chop through a wood line, he can do it. TC coming up on the other wood line. Nice choice by Spaden. Got to keep those wood lines safe. Uh, the scout from Spaden finding the stone. Probably not terribly surprised to see the Viper... Uh, aggressively taking stone. Not surprising at all. Mines player wants a castle somewhere. I thought this might be it, but that's a university for now. Where's that castle going to go? I mean, you could put it here to defend your wood and gold. You could put it in front of your stone. Right there. That's where it's going to go. Viper will drop it there and defend two different stone piles. Spaden already has a mangonel on the way, uh, but he's going to have a tough time. He's going to have to get it out and maybe kill a few vills with it uh, because this castle is coming up come hell or high water. Spaden's going to go with a forward TC on the Viper's gold out here. Wow, that's a really interesting TC on the front. I know you want to keep your villager busy, but that is a really forward TC. Uh, villagers transitioning to gold. We've still got two stables trying to build knights. Forging on the way. Red player has a plus two defense. Has the um, equivalent of bloodlines, I guess, since he's Franks. And he will soon have plus one damage. These knights are going to run in, but they're going to be just a little bit too late. They're going to be a little too late to deny this castle. Spaden, for now, is going to take that, and he should probably cancel this mango, right? Now he's going to build the mangonel. No, he's going to cancel it. He can send the first mangonel to defend this TC, and he got a little lucky. Viper might have been able to kill it with his castle. Plus two, plus one crossbows for the moment. Uh, Spaden is going to run from those. <laughs> Doing a pretty good job to stay out of castle range, but now he's coming in close. Spaden's looking for a big shot to change this game. The Viper with a good split. Spaden gets in two shots, but they both whiff. Knights run in. They do some damage, but they should probably get out. Plus two defense knights are good, but um, in the shadow of a castle, I don't think this is the right fight. Spaden's going to get out of dodge. Spaden looking for that big shot. Keep your opponent busy with the knights. Sneak in with the mangonel. Uh, but the Viper is one wise dude. Hard to sneak up on him. Monastery coming for Spaden. He's going to start grabbing some of these relics. He's got a couple pretty close to his base. Should be in good shape. Transitioning to some rams is the red player. I think that's a really nice choice. Should be able to get in against what is entirely ranged units from Spaden. Should be able to do some damage. Knights are not in that high of number. It's just seven knights right now for the red player. Uh, prioritizing is Eco. He is uh, going to be 12 villagers ahead of the Viper. But... Um, yeah, not going to have a big army at the moment. Handcart coming on this front TC. Why not? Why not? I don't think you want that many villagers in, in that TC anyway. Viper's pretty happy as far as um, being able to defend what was a really crappy map. Isn't Spaden studying biology? Oh, I should ask him. That would be crazy if Spaden was a student at the university that I'm at. That would be wild. Anyway, a couple rams roaming in. The viper here has to come in and try to stop them. He's going to rush those rams down if he can. The knights will run in uh, for the moment. Ooh, Spaden doing a pretty good... Ah, just missing with that shot. Viper trying to pop his villagers out on different parts of the map, but Spaden keeping him really honest. Spaden's going to lose a few vills. I'm sorry, Viper's going to lose a few vills, but Spaden in the end is going to be pushed back. The rams would have worked on me, but the viper was ready. Mining stone over here with about 10 vills. Able to garrison them, ungarrison them on the other side and rush down those rams. Still, a couple villager kills is not nothing. Viper is still under 50 villagers and uh, Spaden is on 67. Spaden with 7 military units has kept the Viper playing defensively for most of the game. Crossbowmen are going to start coming forward. Those are pretty nicely upgraded. Actually, plus 2, plus 2. Uh, pretty damn beefy. Spaden's going to get lured into this fight for the moment. I don't think he has the numbers to take it. He might just not be ready. A couple more knights coming from the other side, but they're on low HP. Viper's getting dwindled down here, but he's going to kill 1, 2, 3, 4. He's going to kill basically Spaden's entire army. Tough fight for Spaden. Viper on top of a hill with uh, some pretty beefy upgraded crossbows. On the other side of the map, we've got a couple skirms from the Viper. Fourth TC now from Spaden, creating mangonels back at home. 
and starting to pump out some knights. Spaden's got a good eco. He's going to build a lot of knights. He's still idling this entire wood line from the Viper, causing his opponent to have to build a ram to take that down. Looks like uh, Spaden rammed down, uh, had his uh, siege workshop rammed down as well. But, uh, I mean, you know, Spaden's got a really nice advantage to win this game, but there's always a but, right? Uh, but the Viper here, another castle, going to take this TC away completely. Spaden's just going to have to abandon it, I think. Um, but all that being said, the Viper had a terrible map, and he's still alive. So maybe we will see the yellow player wrestle this one back. Uh, I was talking early in the game that I, I think Mayans are a sieve that I would like to have a lot more in the late game uh, than Franks. Franks... Franks are a little one-dimensional late game. Uh, Mayans are actually pretty damn nice. But that's just one man's opinion. Who cares? We'll see this uh, TC get rammed down. Spaden uh, is going to be wise enough to move those villagers away. It's amazing to see pro players make these decisions because we can see the whole map. Like, it's kind of obvious. Like, okay, that, that TC is not going to last long. We know. But the fact that they see it too is impressive. Spaden up to Imp. He's going to be chasing around this army, trying to put out some fires from the Viper. Uh, going to do a little bit of ducking and dodging if he can. Viper's going to run right into this really nice narrow space and uh, probably get more damage in because he has less surface area that can be hit by those knights. You can see actually several of these knights aren't even whacking away. But eventually Spaden will clear up the Viper. Viper able to kill some vills. Just a 12 villager advantage for Spaden. That's a lot smaller than it was a bit ago. And we're going to see plumes start rolling out. We'll see a TC go down. We'll see a siege workshop go down. This TC on the front from Spaden was... was ooh, nice mangonel shots. Double mangonels on top of the hill. Viper's going to take one right to the chin. Viper taking one right on the chin. He's going to lose several of those plumes. Those are expensive, man. And uh, for now, they're running back. These three mangoes still on high health. Spaden is, uh, he's really just covering his tracks while he goes to M. You can see he's only got 10 military units, but he's keeping the Viper kind of defensive. Viper at the moment is in a tough spot. Those, uh, those plumes can start to come forward, but I think Spaden is still stonewalled for the most part. Spaden has probably got some stone in the bank. No, just 266. Viper's got enough for another castle soon. Uh, Spaden keeping those mangonels alive somehow. Still sniping down uh, the occasional plumed archer. Looks like uh, looks like one of those mangoes is going to die really shortly. Knights should be able to come in though and clean up these last couple of plumes. Uh, looks like the Viper has his own mangonel out. Just trying to play the mangonel war. That's going to go down. Yes, that's going to go down for real cheap. Uh, and Spaden has the Viper on the defensive. He's in the Imperial Age. Viper still in the Castle Age. Has two castles on the hill. Has done a decent job to defend a terrible map, but but uh, certainly looking like Spaden is going to continue to tech into his knights. He's going to go uh, husbandry, plate barding, and cavalier, and he's just going to absolutely dice these units up. Spaden's still forward trying to build these units, which is really interesting. Still trying to build siege workshops. But uh, not going to get any, re uh, going to lose a little bit of resource uh, in the pursuit of trying to make his opponent uh, play defensively. At the moment, five villager advantage for Spaden, but the big difference here is that, whoa, these villagers are coming forward to drop a castle uh, on top of the hill. Spaden is almost a cavalier. He's going to take this fight before he gets it, I guess because he has a big numbers advantage. Uh, but soon we will see a castle age, or sorry, an imperial age unit, and uh, a nice located castle taking on the viper who's just now clicking to imp. I suppose the viper is going to go into eagles. He's adding in barracks as we speak. Those cavalier coming forward from Spaden are going to get lucky. Wouldn't call it just straight luck, but this is a really nice find, seeing that your opponent's starting to drop barracks. Actually, it might not be eagles. That might be a dumb thing to think. It might just be pikes. Gotta have some pikes if your opponent is like full on cavalier. My bad. I get to I get to say dumb things from once in a while. Archery range coming for Spaden. Elite skirmisher coming. He's gonna start building some counters. Double siege workshop on the front. Capped ram is coming as well. Spaden is gonna soak up a lot of arrow fire. Rams roaming into this territory with cavalier behind them, and a couple of elite skirms could be tricky. Cavalier from Spaden are going to try to get into the Viper's economy. Looks like the yellow player, though, does not have an opening. Oh, God. Spaden's going to run right into a huge hail of arrow fire, and now he can't decide to go in or to go out. 
Should I stay or should I go now? Oh god, Spaden's gonna lose a lot of units there. He's still gonna get four Cavalier into the back of this eco, which is still annoying. But uh, not exactly what he might have wanted. Spaden running right to the corner of the map. Has he scouted? Not quite, but he is going to find this wood line, I think. Yes, Spaden finding the wood line. Viper tried to delete those couple of lumber camps, and I think he was just trying to hide the fact that he had a wood line there. Spaden eventually finding the Viper will grab a couple vills, uh, but this raiding is probably not... It's, it's definitely not cost-effective. Spaden got a couple vills there, but he probably lost 10 knights doing it. Anyway, Spaden keeping the Viper busy, busy, adding in some cap ramps, adding in some skirms, Cavalier on the way. Still just 15 military units really needs to get going on uh, military production. It's hard to bludgeon your opponent's uh, forward area down with just uh, 19 units. A Treb coming from distance from Spaden seems to be using all available uh, options for weapons. Viper though with a ton of pikemen, going halberdier, going chainmail, going chemistry. Uh, I'm sorry, Spaden going chemistry. Spaden gonna add hand cannons or what? What's the plan? I believe that Franks can do hand cannons if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not seeing any more Cavalier. I'm seeing the red player at the moment not having a lot of uh, gold in the bank. But uh, his ram rush is coming. I don't think this is gonna work, man. Halberdier here can probably deny these rams pretty easy. And uh, Spaden's got some skirms, but... He's going to need a few more than this, I think, in order to hold versus uh, Viper's army. Viper, for now, is going to continue to mass up. He's going to uh, see a couple area, a couple of these um, buildings get uh, rammed down. Spaden using his skirms to deter the Viper, but I think the yellow player can take this fight pretty easily. We will see here in a moment. Viper will give a few buildings away, and I think he'll chase these skirms away pretty fast. Treb's still working from a distance, but uh, yeah, Rams are going to retreat. Okay, we've got a bit of a game here where uh, one player has a huge military and one player has a huge economy. But neither player has really shown us that this is their game that they're going to win. Viper with a big score lead, uh, but that is a lot to do with his military. He's made with a nice kill death, but he's been using uh, Cavalier. It's kind of cheating. Treb v. Treb War on the front. Viper will lose another barracks here. Uh, looks like Spaden will, in the end, probably get four barracks for real cheap. Maybe four barracks for one ram. Uh, still, Red Player trying to mass up elite skirms as much as he can. Viper has a big army of, uh, of plumes. Those are not elite plumes. Those are just old-fashioned plumed archers. Uh, Viper's got quite a bit of resource in the bank. He's probably thinking about elite plumes sometime soon. This number really dictates uh, the elite upgrade. Bracer coming first, though, and uh, we're just gonna wait. Both players content with doing a little bit of waiting. We've got bombard cannons from the red player, and uh, it isn't a real Spaden game until you see a ram rush. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Spaden here will add in a cannon. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the Viper's Treb. Probably end up killing the Viper's Treb. Viper coming forward, though, uh, actually able to snipe that cannon just in time. Plumes are in huge number. Viper's got a couple rams. Uh, Treb from the Viper goes down, but he's in a good position here. This army composition is not something that uh, Spaden should really go after. Spaden's got Paladin in now, but he's running them straight into halves. He's got to be really careful. This is not what you want at all. Uh, Spaden's gonna, he's gonna take this fight. He's gonna try to snipe down those halves with his uh, skirms from a distance. But a lot of Paladin going, well, five or six Paladin going down there for, okay. It's probably a decent trade, but not the greatest. Took a big mangonel shot to the face there from the Viper. Viper at the moment is starting to look like he's in a good spot. Spaden is getting on the ground though. He's getting, uh, getting running now with Paladin. What's he got in the bank for resources? He's got a bit. Red player can certainly make uh, a couple more Paladin here. And we'll see how this goes. Trebs, for the moment, are going to soak up some arrow fire. Still, Skirmishers, man, he's going forward with those Trebs, running right into the ram from the Viper. Uh, Spaden here is having a tough, tough game at the moment. He's lost some uh, Paladin for real cheap. He may lose a Treb here. Is he going to keep it alive? No, he'll keep his Treb alive. Uh, but the Viper's unit composition seems to be holding the center of the map. A couple castles on the hill. Uh, yellow player here definitely has a good opportunity. 
Spade and massing up elite skirms, though. That's a really effective unit when all your opponent has is basically archers. Uh, most, if not all, of those halbs did die during that fight, and Spaden killed a lot of barracks, so the Viper back at home has to rebuild all those barracks. Chemistry and Ring Archer armor coming for the yellow player. Elite plumes are finally going to be in full effect, and we're going to see how this game ends up. Uh, Spaden's got the counters. He's got a lot of math control, taking some gold here at a clandestine mining camp. But you have to think that the Viper is pretty happy with this game. He's got a score lead. He's got a military lead, and he's alive on a map that really, when we started out, looked incredibly precarious. I mean, he had this one crappy wood line, which Spaden masterfully towered. He had gold and stone on top of the hill, away from his cratered TC, uh, and he's still alive. So, Viper is still with a fighting chance here. Might be able to win a game. Might be able to pull victory from a game where you probably should have seen him lose. Uh, Paladin will come in, try to cut off those elite plumes, getting in some good damage. Forget about t uh, Castle Arrow Fire, it's not that big of a deal. Only two halves at the moment that I can see from the Viper, but more and more coming as we speak. Skirms will try to clean those halves up as best they can. Spaden is going to honeypot his opponent. Come out and play, Mr. Viper. I've got four trebs. Gonna need a lot of villagers repairing to keep four trebs at bay. Ram out. Spaden should be able to block it and knock it. Should be just fine. Uh, Elite Plume's getting in a lot of damage. These Paladin are not going to last forever, but the castle is down. If we could see both of these castles go down, that would be a really great result from Spaden. Uh, but I don't think we're going to. More Paladin on the way. Trebs are starting to get knocked down by these Halps. Ram coming in from the Viper is going to do quite a bit of good damage. We're going to see all of these Trebs end up dying. Viper is still holding the middle there with all of his elite plumes. He's going to drop a siege workshop on the front. Spaden soon uh, might be able to drop another castle, but uh, the Viper uh, is not going to be doing so. Uh, he is going to be doing so. He just did it a moment before I looked. Another castle in the exact same spot. Viper is going to build another castle in exactly the same location. What do we have? We have plume, Plumid Archers at the moment, cleaning up some of these Paladins. Spaden losing a little bit of territory. Did a nice job to treb down some area, but losing all four of those trebs on the front is actually pretty damn damaging. Damn damaging. And now we see uh, just 37 units on the map, and a lot of those are skirmishers. The Viper here is not controlling the map just yet but he is controlling the score lead. He's uh, grabbing some relics. So let's look at relics real quick. Spaden's got three, the Viper has one. So advantage Spaden on the relics in this particular match. Spaden's played a great match here, don't get me wrong. And I, th I do think Mayans uh, in this situation should be able to win. But Spaden's taken map control and he's taken a lot of resources that the Viper hasn't had access to. I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, mined several thousand more gold than the Viper has. Uh, but, all that being said, these plumes are starting to push out. Cannons are starting to roll in. Uh, we'll see how this goes for Spaden. Going to keep his opponent honest, try to snipe down a couple units. Uh, but the Viper is going to... Ooh, the Viper trying to sneak his plumes around behind Spaden. Spaden's going to run behind this completely. Make those plumes really work for it. They're going to have to run right past Elite Skirms. Knights on their tail. They're running into Castle Arrow Fire. A cannon shot. This is a fantastic, fantastic fight for Spaden. He is going to lose his two cannons, which is a bit of a bummer. And actually, the Viper will get out with a lot of units alive. But uh, nice little trap from Spaden. Still chasing with more and more. Oh no, Spaden's going to lose another cannon. That's just really tough timing. Spaden had a really good fight there, but the three cannons going down hurts him. That hurts him a lot. These are expensive units. Did a nice job to get behind the Viper and force him to run under a hail of elite skirmisher fire. Uh, but in the end, uh, it looks like we will see uh, some of the Viper's army survive. Viper coming forward with Halbs and Siege Rams now. Got to make sure these castles are firing at these Halbs. Unfortunately, at the moment, they're firing at the Rams. Got to kill that trash with the castle and let the Knights do the work on the Rams. A couple traps from the Viper as well. Spaden, at the moment, needs to shit or get off the pot. He needs to either repair this castle or uh, let it die because it's starting to get kind of low. This bill's got to get to work, I think. Uh, looks like the red player will be able to kill the rams, but he'll lose all of his paladins as a result. Still trying to hold the hill with skirms. 
bringing his own Treb into the mix, but the Viper seems to be in control of this part of the map. Spaden has not repaired that castle yet, and he's probably going to lose it very shortly. Ram's getting real close, Spaden loses his Treb, but the Viper will take this castle down. And we will see a really flawlessly played early game from Spaden. Probably, probably not give him the right result. The Viper played this one nicely. I think he realized that what we realized in the early game, if I can just hold out till Imp, even if I'm at a disadvantage villager-wise, just build up some military and protect my main economy, I should be able to win. And right now, we certainly do see the Viper winning 3,000 point score lead. Thanks, Sheik. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, yeah, we're watching a hell of a game. I don't know if it's my casting or if it's just a really great, really well-played game. In the end, Spaden will give the GG. Uh, Viper with a big map disadvantage, but a, a nice civ advantage, I would say. Uh, I can't really say what I would do that Spaden didn't do. I think he played a really flawless early game. Had a couple of bad fights. Unfortunately, he built some cannons that went down for really cheap there at the end. That kind of sticks in my mind. He also had four trebs here at one point uh, that all got knocked down for real cheap. Um, but hey, man, I mean, let's be honest. Spaden did better than I did. I would have done. Spaden did better than you would have done. And he nearly pulled a game from uh, the legend himself, the Viper. The legend. 2374 is not a rating that you stumble into. Uh, Viper playing a really great game there, man. Identif identified his map, identified his situation, and just did what he had to do to win. Got to appreciate that, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed this game. Nice non-mirror matchup. Mayans v. Franks. Uh, the Viper will get the win here as Mayans. This is Killer B. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Much love and au revoir.